Extreme Elevation. Put it in your shoulder. Up high. There you go. There you go. Aim. Five. Hold it up. Hold it up. Back. Recover. Off. Looking down that barrel. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing your face. Right. Yeah. And then uh, I got a. Uh, uh, I thought it was so funny on Sunday afternoon. The, uh, the Union Cavalry guy got shot off his horse, and, I know it. and then the lady comes out there. She shoots him. <laughs> I know I said, I said, Diane, go out there and tell this woman, did you get a couple of people? Yeah, she and, shot him and grabbed the horse. Yeah, she and, shot him and grabbed the horse. She said, she's got a pistol in the motor, she said, she's going to shoot him. She said, she's going to shoot him. She was talking, she was talking. Choking farewell. Choking farewell. That, I guarantee you that that to me that epitome epitomizes the Civil War. That and the body blue flag. Yeah. It's a modern tune actually. It was only written about ten years. The sound has a flight. Yeah. Twenty eight of them, and that nerd don't want to put it.
Material this made? came out of Huntsville Penitentiary, Huntsville, Texas. Okay. And it because they were out of diet. That's the right. reason they're white. And then you have the butternut color on. It wasn't all just Johnny Gray or Gray, you know. No, it was just, well, a lot of the, times they even had the white pants. They had just anything they could get their hands and on the wear. More for the uh, Army of Northern Virginia. Right. The uh, Richmond Depot had the cadet gray because the VMI was there, and the and more cadet corps areas that had the uh, uh, military institutes would have more of the cadet gray. Whereas as you further got out west, we had homespun and penitentiary cloth, mm -hmm. and darn near anything the boys could put on their backs. Anything they could wear. I've seen them wear top hats like this gentleman here. Yes. It's amazing, you know. Uh, uh, what they had to do, they had to endure, they, they brought, I've even heard of them taking the blankets that they were sitting from home, making something out of that. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Because they, they didn't have shoes, they didn't have clothing, they didn't have the reason. Texas was stationed right here in uh, uh, Little Rock area, mm -hmm. early in the war for a long period of time. Oh, it was our camp of instruction, camp. they call it. Exactly. Boot camp. Boot camp, exactly. Oh, we know what that is. <laughs> they were stationed at Camp Nelson. Uh -huh. so, I've even got an ancestor that's buried up here. He died at Camp Nelson. Mm -hmm. and another one that served throughout the war with the 19th Texas. Yeah, I had a relative that was in the third Arkansas down with Hood's Brigade down to Long Street near, out of Texas. And those those Arkansas, fellas Arkansas, saw it all. You know, they were at Seven Pines, uh, Gettysburg, Antietam or Bull Run, whatever you want to call it. We were with the Trans Mississippi, which was the third army of the Confederacy. That's right. Called the stepchild of the Confederacy because we got nothing. We got exactly. That's got right. Nothing. They got nothing, and there was nothing to get really. Each state response was give me your email. Right. Each state supplied their own troops with uniforms. Mm -hmm. Per se, the Confederacy did not have a uh, uniform uniform. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, whatever each state could provide. So, you, know, you had a hodgepodge of uniforms. Right, and back even actually when the, the the war first started, didn't everybody pretty much wear the same blue? I've seen some of them of the North and South. They didn't know militias. Exactly, they didn't know who they were supposed to shoot at. Take the Battle of First Manassas. Exactly. They had just taken a bunch of uh, Yankee uniforms from uh, Harper's Ferry, mm -hmm. and they showed up at First Manassas in Yankee. In Yankee uniforms, so you don't know who you're supposed to shoot at. It was quite a quite a spectrum of colors in the Civil War. Uh, the the uh, Zouave out of uh, New was it the New York Firemen? They wore nothing but red. We had uh, the Louisiana Tiger Wheats. Uh, they they had the ticking. Pants and the Zouave jacket. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I, I've seen some of the uniforms, and they were very flamboyant, you know. And and uh, a lot of these fellas down here, you couldn't tell what what they were with. The spirit the core, exactly. You didn't know what you didn't know what they were going to show up on the battlefield uh, up against. You had no idea what you're going to be against. I, I can't see how they did it, but you know what? I'm kind of glad that uh, you're remembering our, our relatives. Just about everybody in Arkansas has got a relative that they lost in the Civil War. Arkansas put out more people in the war than anybody else. That's what, we, that's what we all try to do is represent our ancestors to keep the uh, true story mm -hmm. alive. Are you with the David O'Dodd encampment? No, we're out of East Texas. East Texas. Texas Brigade. <laughs> I saw the Bonnie Boo. I saw the the star, yeah, the single star. Actually, out of the Trans Mississippi Volunteer Infantry, 19th Texas Walker's Greyhound. Walker's Greyhound. I know he died. We served right here in this area. 
Yeah, we fought he's, he's all our battles mainly in Louisiana okay. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. against banks. Right. And, and we turned banks. He had 30,000 federal troops and 7,000 Confederates. Turned them at Mansfield with that rebel yell. Scared them. Their bridges oh, they fell off and they ran. Well, they, 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 yeah, the Yankees, the Northern, they didn't know what that was. They've never heard anything. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody do an official rebel yell, but it's something that... Yeah! That's it, and it would. They said it would boil your blood. It would freeze your blood on the battlefield. The, the, the last Confederate that could do it said he's too well fed at his old age to even, <laughs> and his teeth were no longer in his mouth, and he couldn't do it because he, he had to be lean and mean. Lean and mean, and on the on the scene. That's it. Lean, you mean, know, and on the scene. There was only one requirement to be a Confederate soldier. What's that, sir? You had to have two teeth, one on top, one on bottom. So you could chew. No. <laughs> No, so you can bite that cartridge off. That's right. As long as you can bite that out and dump it, there you go. You're you ready. have two teeth to bite that cartridge. Well, what are your names, gentlemen? I'm going to get a picture of your buttons. I see you've got the star on yours also. That shows Frank it. Smith. Frank Smith, sir. Well, we're certainly glad to have you up here. This is Miguel Cook. Mr. Miguel Cook. Okay. Yes, what about you, sir? What's your name? Chris Lloyd. All righty, man. I tell you what, guys. We appreciate y'all showing up. It's, it's, always, it's always nice to be able to learn something. If you don't learn something every day, you're doing something wrong. That's right. You know, you're doing something wrong. So this is a, a what, great Every day above ground is a good day. Absolutely. I always get up in the morning and look at the Celine Courier, and if my name's in there, not in there, I get up. Uh -huh. I see y'all hiding in the tent. <laughs>